I'm not sure if it was several people asking the question or one person asking the question repeatedly, but the question they were asking is, how is a conventional shotgun stock more maneuverable than a pistol grip stock? Now, first off, you got to understand, whatever your shotgun setup is, if it works for you, that is the right shotgun setup. We're going to be talking about my preferences. So let's say you want a Benelli M4 with ghost ring sights and a pick rail with a red dot on it and a side saddle that holds 10 shells and adjustable pistol grip stock that's Bluetooth capable so you can just press the button and set the mood. Set lights, 10% power, play combat playlist. Skip song. Skip song. Ready or not, here I come. And that's all personal preference. Now, the reason I like my shotguns configured in a very specific way. Basically, if you pull out your shotgun, since this is a secondary weapon, your chips are down. It means you've been pushed into a point where you can no longer retreat and you have to make a stand. Or somebody's in the house in your middle of the night, you know, fill in whatever scenario you want. So you want it as basic as possible. You don't want anything on there because everything you put on your shotgun is just a liability for a failure. Keep it simple. Before we get to the stock, we're going to talk about load gate. I don't like a load gate. I don't know if they actually make a semi-auto without a load gate, but if I get a pump action, it's not going to have a load gate. So I can double feed easily. And let's say I messed up my feed. For whatever reason, I either fumble or my hand slips off. The shell is still there. I can just push that one in. Really easy to do. With a load gate, yes, the initial double feed is about the same. But it's when you mess up, it just kicks your shells off. You don't get a second chance at it. It's game over. Now, I made a pretty heavy case. I mean, you can go check out the video. It's this one right here. On that, I don't think a shotgun should be a primary weapon. For me, it's a very niche tool that would fit in a very niche role. So therefore, I would not have a single point sling because I would move my rifle to my back or let my rifle dangle, and then I'd grab my shotgun, which would have a two point sling. So I can keep both weapons on me because after I leave that very specific spot or wherever I designated this is a good shotgun job, I would go to the shotgun and once I left that, I would get rid of it. So I wouldn't want a single point sling because then I'd have to take my rifle off, my body, and then hook the shotgun onto that sling. And then if I wanted to leave that spot, I'd have to transition back. Where a double point sling, I can just ditch the shotgun, bring my rifle up. And so with a two-point sling, because of how I choose to dismount my shotgun, there's several different ways to do it. This is how I choose to dismount it. I have it on my back. My single-point sling, because I use 590s, hooks right here, which brings it up to this level. And then I just spin it around and go. With a pistol grip, it's a bit more complicated because you have the pistol grip blocking your range of motion. You can still grab it, and kind of hang off to it on the side, and it does work, but I don't want to hang off it on the side, I want to have a good grip on it. For this one, I have a standard grip, my hand's fully wrapped around it. I mean, I almost just busted myself in the face, but you get the point, like, I'm holding on to this very solidly, so if I bend down or something, I'm good to go. If I turn real quick, it's not going anywhere. Even without a sling, just holding it that way, it's very solid on me. But again, you can mount your pistol grips like that, but it's rough. My hand, I'm holding it and it wants to slip down this way. But it still does work. And you can also use a different sling mount with a pistol grip that would probably work better. I see this other YouTuber do it, I'll put a link right here, but this is basically 
Look at the clip of how he does it. This hand right here, I grab the rifle, I flip it over, and I fire. So he goes offhand, upside down, and then he just grabs the weapon, spins it, turns it, puts it into his shoulder. That would be fine with a pistol grip. And pistol grips do have their advantages. You have a solid grip on this weapon. It would be very hard for somebody to strip this from you. I mean, if I were to hang this from the ceiling, I could do pull-ups from the pistol grip. This would be much more difficult to do. So, okay, that's one reason why I like a conventional stock. Because of how I choose to sling it, and it works really good for that. Oh, sorry. Works really good for that. The second reason is a pistol grip stock, it limits the different types of motions you can do. So for CQB with a shotgun, if you're navigating a corner, I've seen two very popular ways to do it. One, you break it off your shoulder, come up here, and then you go this way, which with ghost ring sights, it's doable. Man, you gotta be careful. You drop the ball or you come up too high or something, this is gonna remove your teeth. Not cool. And you still have quite a bit of length in front of you. The other way, so you come up to the corner, you bring it off your shot, you bring it off your shoulder, and you come down here. You just hold up high. And you're still able to hit the trigger. I should have brought a stool or something to stand on. One second. Alright, so basically what I was showing you. Here, I'll do it like this. You'd come off your shoulder, you'd come down, and you'd be like this. So with this particular Mossberg, I can still work the safety. Slide my wrist forward, and I can work the trigger. Totally normal. And go to transition back to my shoulder, back down, nothing's really changing. My hand is staying in the exact same spot, and look at how short this is. This is right there. And I can really choke it up if I have to, and go like this and still be able to work the trigger. But now I'm starting to lose where I can hit the safety, so I wouldn't probably go that far. This would probably be the max right there. But then you'd be able to go around the corners and be really close. It would be next to impossible for somebody to grab this. Even if they were to grab it, they're still within barrel range and you can hit your trigger just fine. Get around the corner, go back up. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now the pistol grip. So the first one, Come off like this, and this would work okay. You would have your hand pushing up, you could do your push-pull technique, and really mitigate that recoil. So this one, it's not a problem. Where it becomes a problem is if you want to choke it up really close. This is about as far as I can go and still keep my hand on the pistol grip. It's basically the same as right here. I could try to grip it differently, Yeah, this would probably work. Just like put my hand up against the open sight, work the safety and then pull the trigger if I had to. But I mean, you're talking about a lot of hand movement and it's not very natural. Your finger wants to be up here instead of right here. You'd have to keep it up like that too for the cross bolt safety. And a cross bolt safety is absolutely necessary for a pistol grip stock. Let's pretend for a second this was a Mossberg. So whatever, you know, you're coming down the hallway, you wanna do uh, a hard corner. Let's pretend you pick this technique. You're going to do a hard corner, you see something, you can't work your cross bolt safety. You'd have to come up, flip it like that, or your tang safety, you come up, flip it like this, and then go back down. That would cost you a lot of time. Let's pretend it's in this position and you're holding it like this and you're working a hard corner. You see something, you'd have to come up, break your hand position, work the safety, Go back down on the pistol grip and then fire. So if you're gonna run a pistol grip stock, it's absolutely important you have a cross bolt safety. So this stock configuration absolutely will not work on a Mossberg. Couple advantages I almost forgot to totally put in the video is one, because this ain't a primary weapon. And if you were to run a single point sling, you'd have to remove your primary weapon off your body, which I just would not do, or you'd have to make this your primary weapon. That would be the only way it'd be on a single point sling. So therefore it's gonna be on a two point sling 
Now, at low ready, without a doubt, the pistol grip has an advantage. Your hand is always in the right position. You're not really moving your hand around. Going from there to there, good to go. But we're talking about a secondary weapon. So it's going to be slung on your back, and if you do see something, you're probably not going to be at low ready. You're probably going to be sitting like this because you're able to maintain this position a lot longer. What I do when I hunt is I basically just put it in the corner of my pocket, and then my arms are only taking on the weight of keeping it from tipping forward. And because I'm using both my arms, I can hold this position all day. Even if I come lower, like, okay, there's some noise over there. I don't know if it's a friendly or not, so I don't want to point directly in that area until I get visual confirmation that it is, in fact, the bad guy. So I'm keeping my muzzle still pointed up, so if it's friendly, like, oh, hey man, how's it going? If it's a bad guy, come off safety, and then I go. And literally, like, my hand is always staying in the same exact position. Even if I went totally, like, I'm burnt out, I've been there all day, sentry duty has just got me down, so I go totally relaxed, I'm still... I'm, my hand's still right there. That's right where I want it to be. Now, let's say this position, like you're standing like this, even going totally lazy, your hand is still good to go. It's right where it needs to be. You're never changing your hand position. Pistol grip, on the other hand, it's all right. I can't support any weight. Well, I kind of can but it really hurts the top of my thumb. Basically all the weight from tipping forward is done with this hand. That's where I have to support it. Now let's say I get really tired. The only way I can come up past like right about here is to take my hand off of the pistol grip and move it here. So this would be my totally relaxed, okay, there's nothing happening today. I'm bored. I need to just get the weight off my arms for a little bit. I am nowhere near ready to fire. Now the same situation, I hear a noise. I have to come, because I still can't reach the safety, you've got to be able to reach the safety. And right here when I get lower, now I have to start bringing it up. So you can't really work this position, not unless you maybe bring it in like this. Like this would work, but I'm already starting to feel fatigue on this hand because I'm supporting all the weight. You're not going to be able to hold this for very long. Yeah, you'd almost have to... You'd probably have to stand like this. This would probably be the most effective way to do it. And then if you see something go down, but how long can you honestly hold it up like this? 15 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour? Hey, you're going to burn out quickly. The next advantage with a standard stock that a pistol grip don't have, what if you're jumped? Like somebody's right on top of you and you need to get them off of you. Trying to push out like this? You're not really getting a lot of weight in there unless you were to twist the shotgun like that and push like that. Butt stroke. I mean, I guess it's possible, but you just don't have the momentum. If you have to spear, that works because then your hand's pushing behind it and you can get a lot of force going. A standard stock, like somebody just, poof, they're a ninja, they're right here and you just got to push them away real quick. I got my hand behind this and I got my hand behind this. Like, I can push... Spearing is kind of weak, butt stroke, oh man, dude, I could just totally crush a commie skull without a problem. I get a lot of power behind it. And I'm coming down with both hands, both force, getting my weight behind it. Oh, we can't forget about side to side swings. This is about the range of motion. Where I start losing power is right about there. Yeah, I can come like that. Standard stock, I can come either way. Like, Definitely, there's no restriction of range of motion. Now for the heat shield. Yes, in a home defense scenario, probably even most combat scenarios, this would never get hot enough to where a heat shield would be required. But where it matters is in training, because you're going to want to train with it, or train, practice, whatever you'd like to call it, with the exact firearm you'd want to use in those situations. So let's say you're practicing the technique where you go like this. If you shoot maybe 20 rounds, all of a sudden this is getting hot. You gotta have a glove on, or you start getting gun shy, you hold it like this. The point is, you'll get a training scar. So in real life, even though this isn't hot, you're still gonna treat the barrel like it's hot. So instead of being all smooth motion, like John Wick style, you're gonna have to... The point is you get a training scar, but you get the idea. 
and run it that way and then thumb goes back over. The only issue is that if you practice this for several rounds, the barrel is going to get really hot. And if you notice in these clips I have of Rob demoing the technique, he is wearing a glove on his left hand for that reason. I don't usually have gloves with me at the range, so I've just gotten used to rotating my wrist so my thumb is on the forend like that and not on the barrel, and that seems to work okay. So with a heat shield, it never changes. I would use this the exact same way when I'm practicing as if I would in a home defense situation. Length of pull and barrel length. 20 inches would be the absolute maximum. Any longer than that, I just don't think it would serve that role well. Now this is a 20 inch barrel, I kind of like an 18, but I do like the extra capacity of a 20, so I'm on the fence. If I was buying a brand new shotgun, I don't know which way I would go. I mean, either way, as long as you can do this maneuver, the barrel length's really irrelevant. It doesn't matter. <coughs> Sorry about that. I'm actually pretty tired and I think I'm getting sick. But uh, then you got your pump release. I prefer it right here. I prefer my safety right here. This is really bad for this pistol grip shotgun because here's your pump release. I can't hit it without totally breaking it off my shoulder and turning it this way or breaking my hand position and coming under. This if for whatever reason I want to do a slug changeover, which I don't because these aren't my primary weapons. I would never run anything at all but buckshot in them. If we were starting to get out of buckshot range, that's a job for a rifle anyway. So that's when I'd take the shotgun off my back, set it down, and bring my rifle back up. Oh, I almost forgot. Removable chokes. Waste of time and money. This, this is buckshot only. That's all you're shooting out of it. And you want it to always be the same. You don't want your removable choke to accidentally get loose and screw up your whole entire barrel anyway. If you need some sort of choke, if you need anything other than cylinder bore, that's a job for a rifle. But let's pretend this is a primary weapon. You want to do a slug changeover. It's very easy. Your hands are always in the same space. They don't really move around. <coughs> Side saddles. I mean, really, you get five extra rounds. I think you can get them as big as eight and then another spot right there. But you're adding weight to your shotgun. You're adding width. If you're doing like, say you're coming to this, this is just another way for your side saddle to get hooked on you, get hooked on crap. You, for me, I mean, you can do whatever the hell you want with your shotgun, but for me, I like to keep it as streamlined as possible. Less places to get hooked. That's another reason why I don't like ghost ring sights, which I've made several videos explaining it. So I don't really want to go on a ghost ring sight rant. But for me, bead sight is the only way I would ever go for some sort of defensive or combat shotgun. But just streamline, I mean, if this is beside your bed or something, you don't want your ghost ring sights or slide saddle to get hooked on it. If you're trying to negotiate a corner and you got a side saddle on there and you think you're clear, but oh wait, there's an extra inch and a half sticking out and you get hung up and make some crazy stupid noise that gets you in trouble. But that's why I like my shotgun bare bones, basic. No MP3 player, not Bluetooth capable, no ghost ring sights, no red dots, no pistol grip stocks. And again, this is my preference. You have to figure out what's going to work well for you. The shotgun that's going to work well for you may not work well for me. It all depends on your setup, how your house is configured, what type of corners you have. Get out of here. No. Well then, be ready. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, look at the camera. Smile big. Smile big. So the point I was trying to make is if you pull out your shotgun, where this is a secondary weapon, your chips are down. That means you've either been back hey, into a position. Really? Yeah. That means you've either been backed into. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Yeah. <laughs> that means you've either been back. <laughs> <laughs> do you want do you want to talk yeah okay tell them why da, da, da. no like for real fart nugget. you're a fart nugget that means you've either been I back into a... <laughs> <laughs> all right let's try this again okay. are you ready 
You're sure? Yeah. Okay, so basically... I, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Need to go again. Okay, we're going to go again? Uh-huh. Is that a funny You're sure? Yeah. All right, so basically... <laughs> Do you want to talk? Yeah. Hey, you can hold it. Tell them why your shotgun's awesome. I got it, I got it. No, for real. Tell them why. No, I don't want to talk. Okay, then let me talk. All right, so basically. I got, got, got. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get <laughs> Why don't you do the video? No, I don't want to do the video. Do it again. You ready again? Yeah. Okay, you're going to be. You're going to let me talk this time? Yeah. All right, so basically, <laughs> you're not going to let me talk, are you? It's <laughs> going again. Okay, we're going to do it again? Uh-huh. <laughs> Hold on, let me catch my coolness. All right, so basically... <laughs> I know. <laughs> So basically, if you're using a shotgun, since this is your secondary weapon, you've been back in the t Daddy's funny. Yeah. I know again. Okay, this time you're going to be quiet? Uh-huh. Promise? Yeah. Pinky swear? Mm. <gasps> What's that? What? What's that? I don't know. All right. So basically. You <laughs> should. Are you gonna let me do it this time? Yeah. Okay. So basically, <laughs> basically, if you pull. And <laughs> again. You're gonna let me do it this time. Okay. Promise. Yeah. One second. So basically, if you pull it, <laughs> give me it back then. Ah, burn it. You gonna let me do it this time? What one did you give her? Zebra cake. Ah, burn it. Okay, you ready? Yeah. So basically, <laughs> Zanna, you gotta let me do it this time for real, though, okay? Okay. You ready? Yeah. You're sure? Yeah. All right. So basically, <laughs> all right, come on, it's not funny anymore. <laughs> Relax. That's funny. So basically, if you pull. <laughs> Is that good? Uh -huh. So basically, if you pull out your shotgun, <laughs> because this is a secondary weapon. I need to record like five seconds of video. Again. You gotta be quiet though, okay? Okay. No, seriously, Dana. Give me that zebra cake bag. No. So basically, if you pull out your. I got, I got. Give me the zebra cake. No. Then you need to be quiet. Okay. So basically. I got, I got. Dana, I'm serious. You gotta be quiet. <laughs>